heart is basically a pump. We know that. Or at least we think we do. What if I told you that there are at least eight different models of cardiac muscle architecture even today? And here are the models. Scientists have visualized the heart muscle arrangement in different shapes, ranging from a dumbbell, pretzel, bundle, layers, bands, and so on. For centuries, the inner working of the human heart has been a mystery. And now, with the modern visualization techniques, we're starting to see the heart in new ways. So let me share with you my personal journey of trying to understand heart's form and function and what this new technology could mean for health and treatment. In 2003, I traveled from India to the United States seeking new knowledge. I hit a few speed bumps on the way. I did not know that a formal research approval would require several months. So instead, I decided to go to a local butcher shop and order for animal hearts. Now, ordering for animal hearts would not require any sorts of approval, but the butcher was extremely surprised. I ordered for cow heart, pig heart, goat heart, all kinds of hearts. And next day, they all arrived, frozen, neatly wrapped in a delivery box. Over the next week, I used a microwave in the break room to thaw the hearts out, <laughs> and then placed them on a table and carried out some meticulous dissections with the help of my pathology professors. And what we saw was intriguing. The muscle fiber geometry in the heart was swirling complexly. And soon we realized why we had so many different perspectives. You could dissect the heart, unwrap the fibers, and assign it a shape depending upon how you view the muscle works. So I decided on a different way to look at it. I put the heart, the un entire undissected heart, in a water bath and took a high-resolution ultrasound probe to get a panning cross-sectional view of the entire heart across its entire length from top to bottom. And what we saw was very intriguing. The reflections from the inner and the outer side of the wall were swirling in two different directions. The spiraling swirl resembling the spiral arrangements in the nature, like the spiral galaxy. Now, after this, I spent some time trying to link the counter-directional, unique spiral arrangement to the twisting motion of the heart that is easily identified in a surgically open chest. However, one of the most rewarding moments for us was when this picture from those $40 heart dissection right from the butcher shop were acknowledged in the national guidelines on a consensus statement from the American Society of Echocardiography. Finally, we had a consensus on how to visualize the heart's form and function, and measure its function using ultrasound. Next in my research, I tried to connect this unique spiral arrangement to the blood flow, and I thought it should be rotating the blood flow inside the heart. And here is a video which shows the blood flow inside the heart using magnetic resonance imaging. You can see the blue color on the right side and the red color on the left side cross over at near right angles to each other. Similarly, as the blood comes into the left side in yellow color and ejects out in red color, they are in two different directions. These two different directions closely align to the counter-directional fiber orientation, which creates forces for suction and ejection. And also, as the blood flow changes its direction inside the heart chambers, you will see there's an intervening phases where it starts rotating. This rotational flow 
is called as a vortex formation and allows conservation of energy and momentum. So now suddenly, with the new visualization techniques, we started conceptualizing that the heart's muscle action is not just a simple squeeze, but a much more evolved design that is meant for conserving energy and momentum. And this knowledge helped us create new technology. Now you can visualize the swirling flow inside the blood, inside the heart, by tracking the microscopic bubbles, gas bubbles that are used in diagnostic ultrasonography. And you can characterize the swelling flow inside the heart. You can also see it from reflections directly that come from the red blood cells. Now you will see that these are exquisite two-dimensional images which are well suited for flat screen. But the heart is a three-dimensional structure. And there had to be a better way to show the heart in its entire three-dimensionality with true perception of depth. So inspired by Hollywood stage and music, I started looking for holography in medical presentations. And needless to say, it would be expensive and cost me hundreds and thousands of dollars. So I decided to crowdsource the idea. And with a group of engineers from India, Europe and Canada, we performed a holographic presentation at the annual convention session of the American Society of Echocardiography. The potential of communicating heart's form and function in its entire three-dimensionality as a hologram was powerful. But I started wondering, how could a routinely practicing cardiologist use some of this technology in his day-to-day -day practice? Well, now you have technology that converts your desktop into a holographic suite. Consider this technology developed at MIT Media Lab, which allows communicating between users and exchanging three-dimensional objects. This is a three-dimensional model, ultrasound model, of the blood flow inside the heart. And it has a three-dimensional shape as the blood crosses a valve. The valve is called as a mitral valve. Now, let's see how does the valve look on a hologram. The valve looks, this is an ultrasound model again, like a closed French door. And you can see it has also got a saddle-shaped geometry, which is much better appreciated when you lift that image off the screen and rotate in the air as a hologram. On the other hand, this is an abnormal valve. You can see it has got irregular heights. And as it closes, the irregularity causes a wide gap in closure, which makes the valve leak. Now, details like these are extremely crucial for surgical planning and can be obtained directly from ultrasound. There's a lot of enthusiasm in the medical community using ultrasound for diagnosing cardiovascular problems because it is cost-effective, the machinery is small, and getting smaller and smaller, it's portable, can be taken into the communities. For example, in 2012, with the help of American Society of Echocardiography, we performed a humanitarian mission program in India, in a remote corner in North India where thousands of people had collected for a meditation event. Nine sonographers from American Society of Echocardiography performed over 1,000 scans in less than two days. All the studies were uploaded in cloud and read by 75 institutions worldwide, with the reports coming back within six hours, creating a Guinness Book of World Record. Now, events like this really bring home the power of ultrasound in diagnosing cardiovascular problems. However, can you use ultrasound for mass screening? Could you? The answer is no. Why? Because by 2030, the World Health Organization is anticipating a shortage of close to 12.9 million healthcare workers. We need something which is more cost-effective and automated. What if we had something like the passport kiosk units you see on the airport terminals, which allows speedy immigration? 
of thousands of passengers daily. We could design something like that. A person would come and walk in front of such a kiosk, have his picture taken, then a thermal scan will try to detect for any abnormalities in the skin circulation. Then he will put a finger, and that would allow characterizing the pulse dynamics and get a snapshot of the patient's vital sign. And then a microwave will travel through the air and take a sample of the cardiac motion, providing information about cardiac function. If any abnormality is detected at this stage, it would trigger the need for further evaluation, like performing a high-sensitivity electrocardiogram, which could look like this. And at this point, there could be a decision taken if the patient merits undergoing an ultrasound, under ultrasound examination. If there is no physician or a sonographer present there, we do not need to worry. The data would be transmitted, and there will be a physician at a long distance who would perform a robotic long distance ultrasound examination using a robotic arm to visualize the blood vessels and the heart. And after all this data is collected, it will be funneled into an intelligent system which will have a computational algorithm that would integrate the electrical, the structural, the functional data together so that we can quickly discover the medical problem and define the solution which will be personalized. Now, all these movies and whatever the images appear in front of you may look like something like a futuristic scene from a movie, but that's not true. This technology is already here, ready for testing. Some of it's already being tested and is ready for translation. And why do you need such technology? Why do you need such visualization for screening cardiovascular disease? The answer is, Cardiovascular disease is a leading cause of death in the United States. It doesn't stop there. By 2030, cardiovascular disease alone will be responsible for more number of deaths in low economic countries and across the globe than all the deaths caused by infections, nutritional problems, maternal problems, and so on and so forth, all combined together. Technologies like this, can help us stop this. Eventually, it may become so affordable that you will find such kiosks in community outlets and drugstores. And that would go a long, long way towards universal early detection of cardiovascular disease and avoid us spending billions of dollars in late interventions. More importantly, it will help us save millions of lives, millions of premature death, perhaps billions. And then the only mystery would be, how did we ever get along without it? Thank you. <laughs>